So guys, how I got my first 1,000 hours of flying um, was actually a long process to get to it. And not because of uh, the job itself, it's because I tried a whole bunch of different things that um, actually set me back. I started off uh, in a very painful process of applying for jobs day in and day out. At the end of it, I think I sent about 100 resumes to different companies. And guess what? I got zero, zero replies back. And um, it was very uh, stressful. I remember thinking like, um, you know, am I ever gonna be able to get my first pilot job? But you know what actually made the difference? Connections, that's right. You gotta be able to reach out to people in the industry who are actually doing what you wanna do and uh, see if they can actually recommend you for the job. Uh, for me, I mean, I like, I have a big ego sometimes and I like to think that I can do things on my own, but what really made the difference was reaching out to my former classmates and friends, uh, even people that I didn't talk to in a while and uh, just saying, hey, um, you know, how are you liking your job? And uh, you know, if it's okay with you, can you recommend me for the job? Now I'll be honest, there are gonna be people who um, reject you, uh, who probably don't even reply back to you. But uh, you know, it's um, that is just part of life, and I really recommend you make good connections and uh, try and establish uh, good relationships with people as you're coming up in the industry. And actually, the last three out of my five aviation jobs have been due to uh, connections. So, what exactly is the first job that I did? My first job in aviation was as a flight instructor. Now. I highly, highly, highly recommend this job to you guys. It's, sure it's gonna be hard, sure it's gonna be long hours of work, but being a flight instructor, guys, it really, really uh, pays off in the long run. Um, it pays off for several reasons. One is you develop PIC time. What is PIC time? That is pilot and command time. That time is actually very, very valuable uh, in the future when you wanna become a captain at an airline. It really helped me become a captain um, over the others who were first officers as their first jobs, but they didn't get to get the pilot in command time, which I did when I was instructing. So that's a number one big reason to be a flight instructor. Number two reason to be a flight instructor is that uh, um, you learn how to make friends with people, how to communicate, and you actually get to learn your uh, subject matter to even a higher level than if you just uh, didn't flight instruct. If you think about it, in order to be able to te teach something, you actually have to know your material. You can't just get away with uh, knowing just barely enough. You actually have to be able to uh, teach the material and answer questions to students uh, when they ask you. So uh, <laughs> being able to understand your information to a higher degree is the number two uh, big point from about becoming a flight instructor. I'd say another number three point, big point about becoming a flight instructor is, uh, is the connections. Again, it goes back to connections. <laughs> Over the years, those students that I helped uh, uh, instruct have now gone on to fly for airlines. The others have gone on to fly for the military. And there's others who are flight instructors at this point. And um, in the future, if I ever need a job, I know I can reach out to those people and say, hey, you remember me? I was your flight instructor. Hopefully I was nice to you. Uh, can you hook me up with uh, with a job or put in a recommendation? So it again, goes back to the connections. Now let's do the math here when it comes to how much hours you can build as a flight instructor. Um, a typical student needs about 50 hours of flying time between a private pilot's license and a commercial pilot's license. So that's 50 hours of dual time. Now you're gonna have, the student has to fly solo as well on top of that, but I'm talking about dual time. Dual time is time with a flight instructor. So 50 hours of uh, flying time per student. Now, if you were to have 10 students, that's 50 hours times 10 students, in a year you can anticipate at least flying 500 hours of flight time. And guys, to get 10 students, um, it's actually not that hard, especially if you get hired at a busy school. At a less busy school, you can uh, anticipate about five students a year, but still, uh, that's still 250 hours a year. But in much busier schools, you can anticipate uh, 500 hours a year. And the school I got hired at was quite busy. In fact, 
I ended up having 20 students. So you can imagine uh, how many hours I uh, built up in one year. So say you take 500 hours a year with 10 students, in two years you'll have 1,000 hours. And that's 1,000 hours of PIC, pilot and command time, basically captain hours. And with those 1,000 hours, once you have your first 1,000 hours, guys, you're almost set in aviation, literally. It's not when you have jet hours or turbine hours or you know captain experience at an airline, no. It's really what I found that made the big difference, and I've done all of those, by the way. What I found made the big difference was getting to your first 1,000 hours. And your first 1,000 hours at a busy school will probably take you about two years, like I said. And once you get your first 1,000 hours, the next job and the next job and the next job, uh, it gets much easier. And of course, uh, going back to the connections, um, if you have good connections in aviation, you're, that was just your ticket. Even It makes your ticket into your next job that much easier. So uh, without rambling on, I would highly recommend you guys uh, check out flight instructing as a career. Now, there's other ways uh, before I go, how you can get your first job in aviation to 1,000 hours. Um, one is to uh, pay for your type rating for, with an airline. So you pay for, say, a Boeing type rating or an Airbus type rating, and then they hire you directly at the airline. Uh, the other way is to work as a ground staff or work at the office and then uh, get hired as a pilot later on if you do well. But guys, this is just my opinion. I really, really, really am against those two routes. Uh, of getting your flying career started. Yes, you'll find a lot of people you know here and there that have done that to get ahead, but it's not something that they wish they were able to do. One is because it's very, very expensive to pay for a type rating. You're looking at thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars to pay for a type rating. And at the end of it, you have to get hired. I mean, the airline could turn around and say, yeah, you know what, uh, I don't wanna hire you now. And that's happened many times to people. Same with uh, doing ramp as well. The airline can turn around and say, you know what, I'm not gonna hire you now. Um, after two years of, uh, you know, you slogging it out and, you know, working in the office or working, like throwing bags. And that's happened to a lot of friends. They've had to start from scratch again. So I really, really, really do not recommend those two routes of uh, getting your first thousand hours. In fact, it also encourages those companies to take advantage of people if they wanted to, because, um, and they can't even get in trouble for it because they never hired you on as a pilot in the first place. So I really try to stay away from jobs that try to promise you things, but uh, don't actually uh, get you anywhere because there's nothing, there's no contract in place. Of course, you have a contract in place, go ahead. But uh, as a flight instructor, I would highly, highly recommend uh, you uh, taking that route. Now, I can make another video later on as to what, uh, or some of the uh, uh, common questions I get about being a flight instructor, uh, such as, you know, uh, if you're personable or not, uh, if uh, you can afford to be a flight instructor because the pay does suck at the beginning. Um, so I could probably answer that in another video, but this video is about how to get your first thousand hours. And I would say, you know, get those connections in, you know, um, start getting your students uh, list built up uh, maybe even ask other instructors if uh, you can fly with their students while they take the day off. That's one strategy I used. I would ask a lot of senior instructors, you know what, take the day off with your family. <laughs> Let me uh, fly with your student for today and uh, you'll be surprised how many people say yes to that. So hope you guys are having a great day. All the best and, uh, you know, hopefully see you at the airport soon. Cheers.